Don't know if you can make them out, but the uh, midge has uh, beaten me. Absolutely eaten me alive. There's a couple in here. Still got my boots on. I just <laughs> if I can get that, I'll get in. It's uh, dusk, isn't it? So they're very active. So got the fire pit over there. I'm only going to have a small fire just to cook something. Um, I'll just wait till a bit later and have that. Plus, I've seen a few people knocking about. So, just wait a little bit. Oh, let me just have a little kip. Right, bring you back in a bit. Hopefully once the midges have calmed down a bit. A very quick and simple fire tonight, because I need to get rid of these midges, they're doing me head in. So this is a uh, fire dragon, just going to use a lighter. Simple as that. Get back on, get rid of these midges. Oh my god. Oh, they're not as bad as what they were before, but yeah, killing me. So you might be wondering why my axe has got shit lips on it. Um, reason for that is this was a leaving present from my last place. But ironically, my first wild camp back out is back in Fife, even though I've moved south. Um, that was a month ago, so that's why I haven't done anything. I've been very busy moving jobs and that. But I'm back up here because there's a leaving do for one of the lads I knew for a while at my old place. I'm going that to that tomorrow. But anyway, that was from my leave and do. And the reason it's got shit lips on it is that's what I call everybody. Um, especially when I can't remember the names. I'm like, um, you know, shit lips. It's just a it's just a military thing, I think. <laughs> I don't know where I got it from. I've always called people that. More often than I realise, obviously, because they've put it on this little axe. The Grand Four Brooks. And they got me a bigger one, it's got the core model inscribed on it. But they got it put in a handmade um, box, which was really nice, has my um, service number on the top. So, yeah, that's why it's named Shit Lips, because that's what I call everybody. Right, I'm going to let that die down, and then I'm going to get some salmon on and some water for a brew. Do away for a better cause, they'll put that salmon on. I've opted for a different type of brew. I have a brew dog clockwork tangerine. Never had one of these before. Not a tangerine anyway. Not bad. Not fantastic, but a little loot. A moment of truth, what does it look like? Oh. Smoke in the eyes. <laughs> looks done, that's what it looks like. Let's have a little taste. Oh, 
bloody lovely. So salmon, prawns, and some sweet chilli sauce. Just stick a bit more on. On my second tin of this. It's actually quite nice. First sip I was like, mm, I don't know. It's going down quite well. Yeah, it's nice. I recommend it. I'm just chilling in my hammock watching Bushwhacker Man on um, the old YouTube. I'll watch a couple of vids and go to bed. I'll bring you back in the morning. Morning, quarter past eight. I think I'll be getting up in a minute. Um, pack away and go explore the uh, the old fort. I'm not having breakfast because I'll go to Morris Morrison's for a breakfast. I've just decided I can't be bothered to cook out. Plus, I'd have to start the fire again, and I'm not doing that. But we're gonna go off over that way, explore that hill. Have a look at the fort. After I've uh, got up and packed everything away. Yeah, it was a calm night, very calm. There's a bit of wind over in the hit on top of the hills you can hear it, but nothing really affecting us over here. Had a brilliant night's sleep as well. First time I've slept in a hammock without the uh Felt a tarp over the top of it. <laughs> Quite enjoyed the experience. Right. right guys, so that's us all packed up. It's a hammock on the front of the bag. Everything else is in it. Including the uh, coat bag that we brought, the rubbish, everything's in there. See the black bag on top's a camera bag for this camera. That's where we were between them two trees. As you can see, no no trace left apart from one thing I've got left today, which is just it's completely out. But I'm just gonna chuck it in water anyway, scatter the ashes, and then put this back on it. And then jobs are good. And we're off to that hill there. That's where the fire pit was, you can hardly notice the parts of it's trampled. So just deturfed it, had a little fire, cooked my food, let it go out. Um, waited till it went out completely, went to bed, left it overnight, doused it, scattered the crap, put the turf back on. It's nice and damp under there, there's no chance it's going to be a fire. And like I say, a couple of days you'll never, you'll never know. You can see you can tell someone's been here, but I've only left footprints obviously. So, uh, yeah, bag on back, push on the hill. So, we're on top of what was the old Pictish Fort. So, that's West Lomond Hill over there. This is all the fort. It's got an old moat or what defensive wall all the way around it. Until that end where it kind of joins, comes up, and that would have been the main entrance. There's East Roman, that used to have a Pictish fort on it as well. So I reckon this was part of the same tribe. So this was a kingdom of Fib. I don't know a hell of a lot about it, but there was, I think that's where the king was, up there. And I would hazard a guess that this was part of the same tribe. So if this was in distress, they could signal and vice versa. One thing I don't get about this is, it does have some commanding views, but you're covered by hills, so you could get surrounded quite quick in, I don't know, trebuchets or something, probably a bit before, a bit after the Pictish times, but you know. But yeah, surrounded by hills either side, so you could easily see over, or I don't know what the distance of uh, arrows was back then, probably wouldn't have reached, but 
I don't know. I was going to go up there and take uh, some pictures of it from up there, but then people are there. I don't think I'll bother. But yeah, this is it. <laughs> it's not a lot. It's just a hill that used to be a pickfish fork. Just to use your imagination. So this, yeah, that's the defensive ditch or wall that was on about. It goes all the way around to the front. It's not as prominent on this side as it is the other. But you can definitely still make it out. See, it goes all the way around the front. And like I say, around the back, yeah, it goes uphill a bit. And it comes to a halt where the entrance would have been. Again, I don't know that fact, but it makes sense. So we're a bit higher up, you can see it a bit more defined now. You can see what I mean? It's going up and then around. So it's starting to gain height there. So there's the side wall coming up. Stops about here. Got this little bit of flat. And then the other side wall starts there. So see what I mean? Where it kind of just flattens out and disappears. And it's about, okay, I don't know, 10 foot wide. I reckon that's, that was the entrance to the fort. I don't know the name of this, I found it on the, on the map. Um, and I thought I'd come have a look at it. Like I say, I've been here before, this is the second time, but... And it was an abandoned wild camp. I don't know where the footage has gone. But anyway, that's where I was hammock camped, just the edge of them trees down there. Not a bad setting at all, not bad at all. They've got a canny view up there. See if I can find the footage of the view of this from up there. I'm not going up today. Alright guys, that is the end of this video then, so thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.